Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litsa and today we're going to do the big project reveal. Which one was the winner for our Crochet Society subscription box number 49? Now those of you that haven't seen the unboxing, please go and do so because this box is filled with so many goodies. Now after we did that reveal of what was inside the box or the unboxing, it was time to vote. And those of you that have been following the vote will know that it was um, pretty much a clear winner from the very start. But let's just play along this game anyway for those of you that, just like me, like the fun of counting up the votes. Now, inside this box, we had to choose from three wonderful projects. And the yarn that we had to use was this gorgeous yarn here. So this is the ball band. 100% cotton yarn, which is a sport weight. So I had the opportunity to use my four millimeter hook with it. Although in the box you get a slightly smaller hook, I thought for my, um, the way that I crochet, so for my tight crocheting, I thought it was best suited with this. And let me tell you, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I did go a little bit rogue though, so we'll talk about the little adjustments or alterations that I made to suit myself which doesn't mean that you have to do that but I just thought I'd let you know exactly what I did to get the end result now inside the crochet society box we also get this magazine each um, so it's a bi-monthly product and I'll show you the three projects that we had to choose from and they were all gorgeous let me tell you the very very first one is this beautiful sun hat very very pretty and then we had this great collection so the second project actually had a lot of them in there it was all these beach accessories is that okay with the light there guys <clears throat> and then last but not least there was this gorgeous shawl let me just show it to you here how pretty is that now when you get up close i'll see if i can bring it up close here to you look at the beautiful stitches the variety it's absolutely beautiful it was um challenging i think for me when i first opened up the book to decide which project to go with that's why it's always so nice when you guys help me but i have to say that i was leaning towards one and i think that we all had the same idea so let me just grab my little clipboard here and my crochet society pen it is so fluffy and so fun to play with every time we do this so in total, we had 38 votes. So thank you to each and every one of you who took the time to vote. And I love the way that you put a little blurb next to it why you, or a little, you know, sentence to say why you think, you know, this one is a good one to choose. Now for the sun hat, we got six. So six total votes. For the beach accessories, zero. I think because we had made a lot of those in our cowl this year, and that's absolutely fine. The patterns will always be there. And then for the third one being the shawl, it was the winner by so far, which 32 votes plus two people that gave it a second vote. So the shawl it was, which I was actually very excited about because when I did the unboxing, I did say when we saw the yarn that I thought it would make a beautiful shawl. So let me take this project bag off. And let me tell you, I've had this here like a little prop to cover, disguise, <laughs> as if you didn't know what was behind here. Um, the shawl but this little project bag that came with it I have to tell you I carried it around with me for the whole time and it was the perfect size for this project and I absolutely loved having this bag and I'm going to certainly be using it again in the future so money well spent there already I have a project bag now this yarn was absolutely gorgeous let me show you the back of this and then I'll bring it up close to you so look at how it um, drapes the pattern is absolutely beautiful there were 48 i believe or 49 rows some were repeated which of course you know you expect them to be 48 rows in total now as you can see i didn't do um i didn't change the color at all i didn't use any of this one here so i've got a full cake of yarn here guys the um color here which they use predominantly but i thought well why not make it a beautiful rainbow looking um, shawl and it's so gorgeous now i did not do any color controlling the way that the yarn came out of the ball is the way that i used it let me show you the front how it sits and i'll also show you 
Is that nice and close, guys? But I will bring it up close. I'm going to just hop up for a minute and show you that you can actually wear it like, is it a neck sheet, neck scarf? I don't know, but you know what I mean, in the front. So like a scarf like this. So imagine it draped over and then tied up. How beautiful is that as well, right? And it would sit very, very nicely. I think that's a very pretty look as well. I may not have done it justice because of my angle. There we go. Is that better? How pretty is that, guys? Absolutely gorgeous. You could also maybe tie it to the side. I think it is very, very versatile. Now, let me bring it up close to you. I'll pop her out of the way <laughs> a little bit. Now, let's bring it up nice and close so you can actually see the beauty of it. Look at that, guys. And I love the shell little border down the bottom. Here it is here, which I thought was a nice finishing touch. Let me get it for you like, is that better? <laughs> I just can't get it right, guys. There you go, the little shell border there. Now, you may have noticed, and this is where I went rogue for the second time. So the first one was not so rogue. All I did was just um, not use the natural colour yarn or the beigey colour yarn. What do they actually call it? I can't remember. Now, this one here, the one that I used, is um, called Sorbet Stripes. Yes, absolutely gorgeous name for that. And this one was simply Seashell. So very, very pretty. Now, as you can see, or you may have noticed, it's not a very, very sharp V point because most of the shawls that I've made previously, when they're a triangle shawl, see that there? It's much more of like a right angle, but I wanted to make it more like smooth around the bottom, not so pointy, not so long. And I think that I've achieved that. And the reason is our friend Mary over at Slow Crochet, she put this idea into my head and she actually has a video which I'm going to link in the description box. And she showed us a method um, how to reduce that very, very point, that point and make it more obtuse. I think that's the right term. And I did say that when I saw that video probably five months ago, the next shawl that I make that's a triangle shawl, so you can only adapt that or apply that technique or tip to triangle shawls, I was definitely going to try it. And let me tell you the way that Mary explains it. So thank you so much, Mary, for putting that out for us and sharing um, your little tip, because I don't think I'll ever make a triangle shawl again without it having, um, you know, this way of making. Because I, although I love making triangle shawls, I was never so happy, like that happy with a big, sharp V. Because sometimes when they're bigger, like wider, they actually grow very, very long, like a big, long tail at the back, which I never really loved, but I like 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 the thought of doing this and I actually love this now so the thing that Mary does say in her video is when you have a variety of stitches such as this shawl you might just have to fudge it a little bit and we all know that we can do that as crocheters but if you're trying this for the very first time like to make a, a shawl I would highly recommend that you make something that's got like a lot of double crochets that's US terminology, although the pattern is written in UK terminology, so that would be a treble, um, because that way you won't have to worry about, you know, making sure that all the other fancier stitches actually work out at the end. But that's um, something that if you've crocheted shawls before, especially triangle shawls, you shouldn't have any problem with. Um, what I loved about this pattern as well, it's actually got a few of my favourite stitches in there, including the cross double crochet which is, you know, the cross stitches. Now, the way the pattern is written, it, unless you've made them before and haven't used UK terminology, it's a little bit different the way they've written it. But in saying that, I didn't use the video once. I actually made the whole entire shawl just from the written pattern, which is very impressive for me, which means I've come a long way in my pattern reading and I'm obviously very familiar with the um, Crochet Society boxes. But in saying that, it's a different designer pretty much every time. So I was very pleased with myself that I managed to do that. Now, what I loved about this cotton, um, this, beg your pardon, this cake here, it got me to nearly the very end. 
and I thought what am I going to do now I was one and a half rows away from finishing so I had the shell border to do and half a row uh, half of the shawl so half a row of the double crochets and I thought do I put in the seashell color here and I really didn't want to do that. And I did remember that I had a yarn that was very similar in thickness. And I had to hunt for it because it was in one of my um, uh, whips, sleeping whips. It's been sleeping for a long time. And I actually found this yarn here. And it was the perfect match, let me tell you, with the thickness of the yarn here. And the thickness, well, do I have here? I can show you this one here see that guys it's actually perfect the only difference was oh, i'm trying to hold them together for you sorry doing a very poor job there the only difference is that this is 100 cotton and i do believe that this is acrylic but let me tell you for the for where i had to place it it actually married up perfectly matched it perfectly and i'm so very happy that i was able to remember that i had that yarn sitting in my stash because I really didn't want to dip into this one. I wanted to have a whole cake to play with, and now I do. Now, I have no idea what I'm going to make with this yarn. I think I should apply it to a wearable. I could probably make the sun hat, actually, in the pattern book using this yarn for the flowers. Now, there's an idea, isn't it? That would actually match it perfectly. Um, I don't want to use this yarn on, like, a market bag or anything like that, because I think it's just way too soft. This is actually a beautiful yarn, guys. So I'm so pleased with the end result. I think it is a very bright and cheery. Um, I would actually wear it on my back, this shawl, knowing me. Yes, let's have a look. Yes, because it does got a nice length down your back as well. So there it is on a real person, not just our little mannequin over there, Tilly, if you haven't met her before. <laughs> She's so cute. And I think it is beautiful very nice and lightweight you probably use this in the spring or the autumn um, I don't see why you couldn't wear it in the winter and actually brighten up an outfit like this one so once again I want to thank you all for taking the time to help me decide on which pattern to make for my crochet society box because again I can tick another goal for 2024 which is making something from each and every box because for a long time those of you who may have just joined us haven't heard me say that i would buy the boxes ooh and ah over them as you do and then just pop them on the stack and i have so many that i haven't made anything from which if in actual fact if i stop my subscription today i'd be able to do probably at least two or three years worth of videos every couple of months and not have to worry about buying any but for the moment I'm waiting and very excited to receive box number 50 to share with you and of course you know ask for your help again to choose a project now that's about a month away so let's be patient guys we don't have to rush let's pop that over there so you can ooh and ah over it I hope you're all happy with the end result as much as I am please go and visit our friend Mary over at Slow Crochet. Even if you don't want to modify a uh, triangle shawl, she's absolutely gorgeous and you will love hanging out with her. So I hope you've all had something fun to crochet as well over the last couple of weeks because this, this was actually a very quick project. If um, I had just sat down and did it, I may have um actually crocheted it in a whole weekend but because i have so many other things going on i never just sat down to do it i would do it at of an evening and what i loved about it is that the stitches are just so beautiful and they married up so well that you just wanted to continue with it so it was very easy to do four or five rows every night which i absolutely loved in other words it wasn't a project that was uh hurting my brain when i was doing it although i thought when i first looked at the stitches up close that because of the variety that it might be one of those that i had to concentrate and couldn't watch you know uh youtube um you know my shows or netflix or anything like that but in actual fact you can so there you go guys that's another one that we can take our marker and tick crochet society box number 49 our project is finished done and dusted so i hope you're all keeping very very well today is a beautiful winter's 
some sunny day i also said summer because when you look outside it's like summer the sun is shining but it is very very cold it is the 4th of august 2024 after all and what did i expect other than a nice cold day but the sun is shining so wherever you are i hope you're experiencing some beautiful weather maybe even take the opportunity to go outside for a little bit i know that i'm not a huge outside person but today is a day that i will probably enjoy a walk in the park or something like that so until I see you all very, very soon, take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.